Today we ended up getting another title update for Black Ops 4, something that you will actually have to go in and download. It's about 10.9 gigabytes for Xbox One, and I think it was 9.5 or something like that for PlayStation 4. And PC right now does not have it at the moment that's coming on later in the day. I'm recording this pretty much right as the update went live. So by the time this video goes live, it's more than likely out there. If it's not, it'll be out very, very shortly. That said, this title update was quite a hefty bit, especially considering that last week was what encompassed all the big additions in terms of features such as Nuketown, such as Blackjack Shop. And though Xbox One and PC are finally getting that today, it was something that was part of that title update last week. It was just time gate for today. But that said, with such a big update on our hands in terms of file size, what's all in it? So today we're gonna break down absolutely everything that changed here within Black Ops 4's November 20th title update and tell you guys everything you need to know. So that said, let's jump into it. More than likely, the first thing you'll notice is again, right when you boot up Black Ops 4, you'll be met with that quick menu selection UI where you have multiplayer, blackout, and zombies. As for this week, we ended up getting a brand new featured playlist, which is above the multiplayer tab, that being a TDM 100, which is exactly what you think. It's TDM, but instead of a score limit of 75, it's 100, which is pretty awesome. I like that about Black Ops 3, that was the default score limit. So I'm all for TDM 100. It offers a little bit more in terms of gameplay possibility if you're a solo player, if you like to play TDM, which I love to do a lot. Then we also have quads on deck for this week's featured playlist within Blackout. Still no limited time mode, which I'm kind of curious about, and then we still have nine as that default zombies go to for the quick menu selection. But talking about playlists a little bit further, we also end up seeing that on top of TDM 100, Gun Game actually was not removed, contrary to what was detailed last week in the blog post and Reddit update notes. That's still there currently and is still in the featured playlist tab. We also end up having Endurance Mosh Pit sticking around. That was last week's featured playlist. It's no longer in the quick menu selection tab, but it is there in the featured tab if you go in and try and sort out what game mode you want to play. Additionally, we also end up seeing that we have Mercenary Mosh Pit and Mercenary Hardcore Mosh Pit available, and this week it's no longer just capture mosh pits. It includes TDM, Kill Confirmed, Hardpoint, and Domination. So a little bit of that deathmatch and capture mosh pit put in together and mixed all into one. The only slight subtle difference is that Mercenary Hardcore Mosh Pit doesn't have Hardpoint. That's just simply because Hardpoint isn't in the Hardcore modes within Black Ops 4. Playlists out of the way, there is something else that you'll probably notice whenever you jump into just regular multiplayer matches and want to play a game of whatever it may be. Nuketown is actually now in the regular rotation for multiplayer maps. Whether it be on Xbox One and PC or PlayStation 4, you now have the option to jump in and get Nuketown as a regular map that will show up in the rotation. And if I were to guess, it's probably on a little bit more of a boosted percentage of what it will show up as the options to play. I know that the very first two games that I ended up going into, Nuketown was that selected map, so it's very possible that because it is still brand new, they have it boosted up a little bit for the chances you'll come across it, but that's not really confirmed, that's just my suspicion. Before jumping into any gameplay changes in relation to weapon balancing and weapon tuning, score streak tuning, and things alike, let's talk about some different features that were added in or slightly changed as of this update as well. We're gonna jump over to create a class firstly here at this, and the biggest one that you might notice when you go in, and there's not many that you can pull from with this in terms of signature weapons, signature weapons as a whole were slightly changed because you still have the variants if you have some that haven't been taken away or anything like that, but fundamentally, the reactive and mastercraft camos have been changed out currently as it stands right now reactive and mastercraft camos are both available right off the bat by default the mastercraft camo being one that you can actually equip right then and there if you've never completed any of the challenges doesn't matter you can put it on reactive camos are still there and do have a challenge associated with it where you'll not only get xp and it also goes from that sort of like gray metallic mesh look to the camo itself once you end up completing the challenge but that's something that no longer has the performance camos as a prerequisite. Previously, you had to get the 100 headshots or 100 one-shot kills, whatever the challenge was for it before the reactive camo would unlock. And then you could go for the reactive camo, get that, and then once that unlocked, you had the option for a challenge with the Mastercraft camo. That's a little bit different now. Again, they're kind of much more accessible to the casual player, but it is something that was changed around. To me, I'm a little indifferent on this at the moment because I did all sorts of challenges for every signature weapon that I have thus far, except for the MX-9. So it's cool to be able to use the Mastercraft on that, even though I haven't gone through and completed all the headshot challenges yet. 
but I also don't really know if I like it entirely because it was something to go for. It was, as the name suggests, a challenge and something that kept you going for that one weapon. So right now I'm a little on the fence. I don't know if it's really settled in enough for me to get an opinion on it, but that's what's changed out with the signature and Mastercraft weapons. The next place we'll jump over to is the black market because there have been a few changes here with this. Firstly, right off the bat, you might notice that Blackjack Shop is now actually the default landing page instead of the contraband stream. And the only thing that really changed out here with Blackjack Shop is their new featured items and a new rotation of everything. Obviously, the daily stuff will change out daily. We continue on with the Firebreak as well as Crash versions of the Muertos pre-order items that are available for 900 COD points each to activate their sort of tier quest line for multiple items. The contraband stream did have a slight adjustment here to it because it has a slight redesign. This is actually one that I can kind of get behind. It gives you a little bit more of a heads up and preview of items that you have coming up. Whenever you have something of legendary, epic, or ultra rare value, it actually gives you a little bit of a preview as to when you'll be seeing that. Above your tier indicator and that preview of your next five tiers, you see that you have certain loading tick marks and some are colored in with whatever item may be coming up. And to me, that's kind of cool. It's not game breaking. It's not something that I really ever thought of, but it's nice to have that indication of. Another slight little alteration to mention is that there's now a little bit of a glare wipe which is just kind of a cool little effect to put on the more rarer items so some cool redesigns no less nothing really too major once again but now we're gonna move over into the special orders because this is one where I'm gonna give my feedback here but my job for these videos is to just give you the cold hard facts I try to remain neutral on pretty much everything and just give you the information but this actually kind of made me a little mad. Firstly, I end up seeing that there is only one special uniform available for the special orders this week, the Bombero Firebreak theme. And this is actually available for seven days, not three to four as previously seen. But the other thing that is available in these special orders is the seasonal fall special order for the fall firearms special. For 2,000 COD points, you can end up activating a 13 tier special order that will grant you at the beginning the Strife Divinity and Divine Justice Pistol, which was previously a GameStop pre-order exclusive, and then also you end up getting at the very end of that the Carbon Cobra Maddox RFB variants. Now this I have quite a few gripes with, one being that, well, so much for exclusive items. We saw that with the Muertos themes things coming in Blackjack Shop as of recently, but weapon skins were another thing that I kind of thought they'd hold off on touching and throwing into the marketplace, but alas, here it is. Then we end up seeing the reintroduction of a variant that everybody had for free for a limited time that was then removed, and now that's again associated with a, I guess you could say, $10 price tag, even though you can't break up the bundle. So you have $20 for two weapon variants on items that were either free or exclusive, and you have them for purchase now within special orders. Now you have seven days to activate this if you wanna spend the COD points here on it, and it doesn't matter how long it takes you to complete it afterwards, so long as you activate it in that seven days, and then that's when that deal will go away. But to me, fair warning, and pardon my French, this is absolute bullshit. 20 bucks for two variants that one, players may already have, and two, one that was given for free and taken away. Sure, yes, you have calling cards and the tags and everything, but I'll be totally honest with you, I don't use any of that. I don't ever plan on using any of that. I'd kind of figure we'd get direct purchasable items like this, but I didn't think that it would be stuff that, again, we saw given to players and the taken away and also some that already have it. And so one, one of my complaints is that players already have one of these. So they gotta pay 20 bucks for one, whereas others have to pay 20 for two. I still don't know why the price point is so high for things that people already have or don't have, but did have. And again, just 20 bucks. And I understand, yes, 20 bucks, you'll pay 20 bucks in Fortnite for a skin as well. And it's simply cosmetic, you don't have to buy it. But I'll be the first to tell you that even in Fortnite, that's still wildly overpriced. And when you get two signature weapons, that again are kind of an asterisk because some players either already have them or we did have them. When you're paying a third of the base total of the entire game for two cosmetic items and two variants, that to me just is a little steep. But I guess I digress, we'll jump into some other stuff here. I don't wanna turn this into a rant video. I wanna give you guys the information and everything that did change. So jumping into everything else. Clan tags and kill counters for your weapon prestige items. Those have actually been adjusted to be LED displays for higher visibility on weapons compared to what they were previously, which is nice. Not everybody really seemed to like that. It was very small on the display. So seeing that change now is certainly great. There are a number of fixes to the game in terms of stability on the multiplayer end for crashes that honestly, I didn't even know existed. I'll toss the image on screen right now so you can kind of breeze through it, but we ended up seeing that there was a bunch of stability fixes here for that. So obviously very nice to see that out of the way and fixed up. 
up. Score streaks got a little bit of an adjustment. The first one that was mentioned was the care package. This actually adjusted the delivery chopper entry and exit points across the map to reduce delivery time. So hopefully you should be ending up getting your care packages faster and hopefully they don't glitch out as much as they used to. I know I saw a ton of clips over on Reddit, Twitter, YouTube, wherever it is of just fails from the care package. So hopefully this is something that did get fixed out as well and now makes it a lot easier to use, not only to get, but also reduces any errors that it would cause. The score streak adjustments in terms of the scores got nerfed and buffed. The dart got reduced from 500 to now 450. The RCXD got a nerf in which it is increased from 450 to 500. The lightning strike was reduced from 900 to 850. The sentry gun was reduced from 950 to 900. The hellstorm was increased from 850 to 950. The sniper's nest was reduced from 1100 to 1050. The mantis was increased to a default of 1100. The thresher was reduced from 1250 to 1200. The attack chopper was increased from 1200 to 1300. And then in terms of just general changes overall to score streaks, it reduced the given score streak score granted for kills from plus 25 to only now plus 10. So wrapping streaks with your streaks is gonna be a lot harder now this time around after this update. Weapon balancing saw a few different changes to just a few weapons. The tactical rifles were the main focus of this in which we saw adjustments to the swordfish, which it reduced the upward recoil to achieve more accurate bursts, meaning that this thing actually got a buff and it now is more of a laser shooter than it was before. The ABR-223 was also on the chopping block and it extended the four hit kill range from 25 meters to 32 meters in game, which is a substantial increase here at this. So it should hopefully be a little better as well, but still maybe not the greatest compared to other weapons. One interesting part though that I have heard for at least console is that the swordfish and the ABR after this tuning pass of weapons actually did mess up the operator mod quite a bit where it's not firing a full five shots in the penta burst and then the repeater actually doesn't full on repeat. So that might be something to keep your eye out for and that'll probably be addressed here in a hot fix coming up very, very soon and shouldn't require you to re-download anything or actually take one. It just will probably restart your game, but that's something to keep your eye out for that I haven't heard any mention of just yet, but I wanna let you guys know about if you're having issues. That's why. Zombies had a whole ton of stability fixes here. I'm talking over 70 fixes to the game, so that's something that I'll put, again, a little scrolling image of everything on screen for you guys right now so you can check it out, but just to save you guys the time, I'm not gonna go through in detail every single one of those 70, but huge stability fixes, and it still hopefully is coming along that it makes the game a lot more playable for Zombies players. One big thing that I'm super excited about, though, with a blackout change that resolved an issue that caused screen jittering if you were running and ended up picking up an attachment that would automatically attach to your weapon. Super happy that's resolved because that was one of the biggest annoyances that I had with Blackout, but that's something that was changed out. For PC, there's a couple things that were adjusted. We ended up seeing the Spitfire, Cordite, MX-9, and GKS on the PC alone ended up getting adjusted. The Spitfire reduced the damage within the 9mm range and restored previous ADS movement. The Cordite, MX-9, and GKS actually all restored previous ADS movement speed, but they also all had the reduction of the damage within 3 to 6 meters reduced as well. But that's about it right now for this update. A lot of things did change out. A lot of things got adjusted for stability, some weapon tuning, some different changes all together. But that's something that we have tomorrow to look forward to now with a quad feed XP event starting for all game modes, for all platforms, Xbox One, PC, and PlayStation 4, all gonna be taking advantage of that as well. So that's something you can hop on board with tomorrow. But for right now, Love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What are your favorite parts about this update? What are your least favorite parts? Whatever it may be, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, multiplayer, blackout, zombies, you name it. We got you covered with the best of updates, news, information, tips, tricks, whatever you can name, we got you covered here on the channel. So if any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with outside of YouTube, practically live on both those. So if you guys want to check those out, links are in the description below. But all that said, now to the way, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. Take care and peace.